Welcome to Data Crunch, where we talk about artificial intelligence, AI, uh, big data, and also data science. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> All right, so in this episode, we're going to talk about how to analyze customer reviews or what they're saying about a brand or a business online. Yep. Now, we're also connected digitally. You use our phones every day, you use our laptops every day, and uh, most businesses today are also online, right? But what are the customers talking about uh, them? And should the business know what their customers are talking about? Right, so we're gonna talk about this today, and um, we do we have any examples that you can share? That, that no, that, that's just going a bit too quick. <laughs> but before before we go into that, right? Let me ask you a couple of questions, Ruben. Now you are a digital marketeer. Right, right. So um, before that, let's say when uh, some of our audience, if they are running a, a shop or they are e-commerce merchants, mm. and when they launch a new product or when they have some existing products, they need to know the customer reviews or what people has been talking about them. Right. right. Uh, what what would you do for them? Okay, so most people, uh, business owners who, who do not know the technology uh, know-how, what they'll do is they'll do it very manually. They'll go into Facebook, they'll start scrolling and see their comments, they'll see their likes, see their reviews, and try to make sense of what's going on, right? But uh, one mm, way... But, but when, when you do that, let's say manually, you, you can do it like when you have maybe you know, 10 comments or 50 comments, that's fine. Like last time when, when people ask for PM, then you can, you can inbox them if you have you know, 10 PM requests or 20 yeah, per yeah. day, but when you have more than 50 or 100, then you need a chatbot, for example. Then you can show us some ways that uh, they're able to do it uh, if they have multiple products, they have many products. Right, right. So one way as a digital marketer or mm. a business owner is to use things like Google Alerts. I'm going to show you right here in this screen right here. Okay. So uh, if you look at my screen right now, what you have to do is basically quite simple. If you are looking for, let's say, um, give me a brand, Dr. Lau. Uh, brand, let's say KFC. Okay, KFC. Let's say I'm KFC. So I want to clear a little about KFC um, or maybe KFC chicken, for example. So I'll just put in things like this and create an alert. Okay. All right. So what's going to happen is uh, every day, or you can set it once up here, I'm going to receive articles yep. related to KFC or related to that keyword that I just put in mm -hmm. into Google Alerts, right? But what, what happens here is it's quite limiting in a way that I only get articles which Google can scan for this um, So mo keywords. mostly news articles or, mostly news articles, or blog posts. Or blog posts uh, but I don't get things like, you know, maybe a review, a comment, things like that. But what about social media? Like, like you mentioned earlier is that people use social media to talk about stuff or short text basically. Then um, our merchants, where, where can we get them? All right. So if you're thinking about doing it on uh, social media, there's uh, tools called social listening tools. Okay. And something similar to that would be something like Brand Watch. Okay. All right. Of course, there are, there are the suit of all these kind of things. Uh, Hootsuit used to do that. I'm not sure whether they still do it now. But it's something like Brand Watch. So basically, you sign up for something like this and it tells you, based again, on keywords what your customers are talking about your brand on things that you set but these kind of things can become quite pricey right I think cost is one thing but also still quite quite tiring in the sense that I have to manually scan through all the, the reviews yeah you need someone to sit down on this software and just look at it every day and then try to make sense of what you see online. Yeah, yeah. Right? I, I, for, they, are, they are always, usually when we do text analysis for, for data scientists is that when it's a small amount of text like social media text, it's easy to read and digest manually but it takes a lot of time because uh, a lot of them are noise. Right, they're, they're using a lot of slang, you know, mm. funny, funny words or emoticons. But when it comes to long form of documents like uh, a blog post or news articles, then it takes a while to digest that. And then mm. people, uh, humans probably get tiring and they, after yeah. 10, reading 10, 20 articles. That's one thing. But uh, as you mentioned, usually they cost also. So how much would, would it cost you? Oh, a lot. I mean, it goes as, as low as maybe... 50 to 100 dollars per month but as your traffic gets more yep. if you're a bigger company it's going to go up to the thousands and us dollars <laughs> US, yeah. dollar, yes. us dollars yeah. okay well, and uh i think another limitation of those things is that uh when you are data scientists and most of most of them when they first join a company you are 
I don't expect you to ask your boss for you know, hundred dollars. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and when you when we talk about subscription, usually it comes in an annual package. Maybe yeah. you have to sign up for twelve months. And social listening, so um, like those monitoring tools, it usually takes about two to three months just to see the effects of the mm. trends, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think that's not really viable uh, in a sense, or not not your immediate first options unless you can show values to your stakeholders or right. your management. Right. So as a data scientist or a data expert, right? Yeah. You are actually required, or you actually do it your own way, yes. right? In the sense that, I, from what I understand, you actually build your own uh, listening tools to scrape the internet, or you know, doing some ways. So, how would you actually do that, or, or what what can we do in terms of data science? Like uh, in our previous uh, data science three sixty program, some of the participants or some of the students they actually build their own uh, social media and news article web scrapers so that they can gather. Information about the, I think general election, right? Yeah, they, they did Mah- one of them. Mah- Doctor Mahathir uh, and yeah. also Najib, Najib. and C. Vishan has yeah. more likes and more sentiment. Yeah, sentiments yeah. and stuff. So that's one way that we do. But before we go into that, uh, some things that we we never talk about is uh, natural language processing. So natural language processing is the fundamentals of any kind of text processing because, uh, for example, Siri, Google, uh, Alexa, Google Home, they take our spoken language and then we transcribe it into uh, uh, numbers forms that computers or machine can understand. So similar things will have happened to like images or even like uh, audio. So everything that is uh, unstructured data has to be converted into a number form before it can be actually processed or analyzed by our own programs. Oh, okay. Mm. So every data has to be transformed into a Sort of number. Yes, before num- we can process. Yeah, it numbers. Can... Yes, they have to be, be numbers before they can, it can be analyzed. Right, right. So besides, I mean, we talk about sentiment analysis, mm. right? So what kind of analysis would this be called then? Okay, uh, maybe I can show you an example. Is how do we use text analysis method mm-hmm. to process uh, movies overviews data set? How about that? Yeah, sure. That, yeah. That's great. Okay, uh, and we'll get back to that demo or how we're going to do that yep. after the break here. Yeah, see you in a bit. Okay, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that little break. Now, uh, before we go into the demo, mm-hmm. right, about the, the movies and all that, um, Dr. Lau, who uses text analysis and for what kind of purpose? I mean, we talk about the purpose, but who uses text analysis or any companies you know are already using it? So from a digital marketer point of view, I think you, you guys deal with that every day. Like for example, Facebook, they actually scan your advertisement for, for text, right? Mm-hmm. If there's more than 20% of text, then they will... Uh, reject your reject ads. Our ads yeah. yeah. Okay. And then we, we use it every day. Like Google uses it to help you to fight the spam. Basically, they scan your text, uh, your emails, and all your documents to see whether there are some keywords, there are spammy keywords, and then they will throw that into spam box. So that's also buy, 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 yeah, price, yeah. price, 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 and it's yeah. considered spam. enhancement and stuff like that. So, yeah. so the, the Google, the Google Gmail. I mean, uh, we have inbox. I'm not sure if you have that, but you have inbox promotions, yeah. social. So the way Google does that is by Text analysis as Text well? analysis, yeah. Ah. So the, the, the demo that I'm going to show you is the same fundamental techniques that Google, Facebook, Yahoo, eBay, Lazada, we, they all use the same techniques. Right, yeah. right. So that's very interesting. So let's get started in that. And uh, Dr. Long, okay, please sure. show us how to do it here. Now, in this example, I'm going to show you is that we look at 45,000 movies. And now let, 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 let's use this as an example to you, Ruben. <laughs> okay. uh, this is your, your second day as a data scientist. All right now, I give you 45,000 movies. And uh, I don't know what, what those movies are, but I, I do know that I want to group them into, let's say, 20 groups. And then you can tell me about what, what are those movies. Group them into 20 groups of similar movies together. And then tell me why are they grouped together. So how would you do that? I'll probably group them into uh, the types of movies. Thriller okay. movies, comedy, mm-hmm. action movies. 
But like but that. that is very mainstream because everybody does that. That's based on uh, a classification, and that classification is rigid. I give you an example. Some sometimes the movies can be a drama、mm-hmm. and horror at the same time, or it can be a horror love movie. Okay. Uh, I didn't really see one before, but something along that line, right?、Mm. So it, it's very hard for us to classify them into movies. Just like okay, this is a horror movie, but at the same time, this might be、uh, like a, a comedy, for example. A horror comedy. A horror comedy, right? You see that a lot. So how would you do that? And it's there's forty five thousand. It's not about four hundred fifty、mm. or four thousand five. So、right. what I'm going to show you here is also a, a technique called clustering. Clustering is a technique that we group、uh, content or we group data together based on their、uh, their content, yeah, based on their features that are similar.、Mm. Okay. So first of all, once we load the movies overview, we are going to convert it into numbers. Right?、Okay. Remember, numbers. Always numbers. numbers. So that's something called TFIDF. So TFIDF is. Uh, we, you can see from here. So is numbers. So we have words and also their respective weights of those words. So once we have done that, then we are going to put them into a k-means clustering model. So、uh, probably a, a one-minute introduction about k-means is that we look for the central point of each clusters, and then we assign those movies to the、uh, closest to their central point. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you you pick a few central points. In、okay. our case, we pick twenty central points, and then we measure how similar these movies with their、uh, central points.、Mm. And then after that, once we process it already, the the model will actually help you to to calculate that. And after a couple of iterations, it gives us twenty clusters or twenty groups of movies that are similar. Okay. And then from there, you can then look at the result. So what I'm going to show you here is、uh, one of the result from one of the clusters. So let's say cluster one dot CSV. Okay. So you can see that there's a, a number of movies here. They're grouped together because they're similar. Oh, okay. Okay. But does that is it enough to tell you why are they similar? Or are you able to make sense? Let's say we we look at the movies here, yeah, Taxi Drivers,、uh, Four Rooms, The Rock. You probably watched some of the movies before,、mm. but、mm. yeah, you are unable to to really explain to your boss. Now now your boss asks you, right,、okay. uh, Ruben, you give me twenty groups of movies already. <laughs> right, right. What are they? What are they grouped together? For example.、Mm. Okay, so that that's one of the issue here. So another things that we can do is we are going to use a technique called word cloud. Word cloud. Okay. Yeah, so now for we generate a visualization, a word cloud visualization for every single cluster. Now、mm-hmm. it's going to tell you that what are the keywords in the、uh, respective cluster. So、right. if you look at the, the chart here again, now if you look at the first clusters, the, brother. yeah, brother, right? So the movies in these clusters or in this group is about brother, mother, father, death, and love. And yeah, so it gives you a, a brief idea about what are these movies. So lay, layman question, right? So when I look at the the picture here, I mean the, the graph here,、mm. uh, I see that brother is very big. Yeah. Right. So that means the the term brother、yep. comes up most often in all the movies in that group. Yes, correct. So、uh, or in another way, I would say the the movies in this group are mostly related to brother, father, so a bit of a family, but also there's kill and murder. So I would say the movies are related to this theme. To a family, yes, to a family, so, but it's also some.、Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then if you look at the the second one, then、right. you probably look at、uh, keywords like life, take, night time, and then young man. Yeah, so you 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 are able to make sense. The problem with clustering is that it's able to tell you why these、uh, items or these data points are grouped together,、mm. but it's very hard for us to to put a label or put a topic to it. But if we look at the the other examples, will be this one will be easier. Like you look at girlfriend. Wife, house, home. It's definitely a family type of、mm. movie.、Mm. And then the other one also is also a family type of movie because the family, the word family is so big. But it's more about father, son, love, love. live, and daughter.、Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you you get a, a, an idea about that. Now when we apply this into business, also the same thing right, because right. it's very hard to for us to classify a customer review、okay. into a certain a certain group. But we do know that these people talk about. Something and we want to find out what are the 
keywords they talk about your product. Uh, Sometimes your product they can talk about the performance, and they'll use some words, some slow, uh, not responsive. Not responsive. Yeah. yeah, you you don't know what words they are using, but you group them together because they are mm-hmm. similar. Now on the other hand, you probably can look at another groups people talk about. Let's say your phones, then they right. talk about right. form uh, form factor, small, yeah, not comfortable, mm-hmm. the material, the finish, etc. So where where is this data taken from? This is from Kegel. Yes, <laughs> your favorite data. <laughs> and, and if if I'm a someone working in a company, right, yeah. and I want to collect data, where yeah. do I collect them? Where's a good source to collect them? Okay, so if uh, if you know how to write uh, simple scripts, right, you can use Python to write a web scraper so that you can scrape those uh, reviews or comments from uh, any open website like Amazon or eBay mm. or even like uh, Lazada or Facebook ah. groups. Yeah. And and how big would the uh, data would I need to in order to do? So, um, actually, the size of the data usually doesn't matter. But a, a good starting point, let's say, if you want to group them into five or six groups five of customers' six. reviews, then I would say at least starts from five hundred to a thousand reviews. Now, reviews is not really hard to get. I mean, we are in the information overload era, so not hard to find blog posts even. But I would say five hundred to a thousand is some is a good starting point. Yeah. Okay, so I think that was very interesting, and I think uh, text analysis is something that uh, most businesses can use, most organizations can yes. use, and it's also a skill that most data scientists should have. Yes, so a lot of time when data science or data data analysts when they start, right, they start with numbers, they start with structured data because that's that's what we learn, mm. SQL tables, but. Um, I usually like to teach people how to handle uh, this sort of information, like unstructured data, text mm-hmm. information. The the application, I think, is endless. It's all about your imagination. You can put it into uh, sentiment analysis that we talked about uh, last time. And then you can also build your own mini search engine that helps you to uh, do a lot of document similarity check as well. Mm-hmm. Now, Ruben, due to the time constraint, I can't really show you a lot of any uh, many other techniques, but it can be used in other, other aspects like sentiment analysis mm-hmm. and also uh, things like reviews. And most of our students actually, if they're not doing sentiment analysis, they actually use it for things like compliance because okay. uh, in finance or in, in legal, you have a lot of paperwork that right, you need right, right. a lot of uh, text analysis to help you to achieve that. So from there, they can build their own little mini Google or mini search engine uh-huh. that helps them to achieve that yeah, with their specific keywords in their fields and domains as well. All right, so I think that's a very extensive uh, episode that we have done on as, text as analysis. Yeah. Now, what are the key takeaways uh, from this? I'm sure some of you would want to have the data sets and also the notebook files that yeah. you've shown earlier to play around, to try around. Yeah. So, so I'll, I'll leave the notebook that I use there and also the data set in the, in the link below. So uh, feel free to grab it. And if you want to learn something beyond what we have shown today, uh, send us an email or leave it in the comments and we'll know so I can show you in the upcoming Data Crunch series as well. Yeah, or check out Data Science 360, which is our most complete uh, data science course certification. Yeah that we have created so far Mm -hmm. in our programs. All right, so again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. What are your questions? Leave them down in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook and, you know, visit us for more content at www.thelead.io and um, we'll see you again next time. Thank you. See you.